Imagine, if you will, a spring day. And you are a high school junior in British literature class. And I am your teacher. <laughs> I say to you, in Hawthorne's The Scarlet Letter, Hester Prynne is a woman who is punished publicly for being sexual. After a lusty affair with a local minister, Hester gives birth to Pearl. Physical proof of her sin makes her a target of her community, and her lack of shame really pisses off the Puritans. So they make her wear a scarlet A on all of her clothes, but she never names the father. So Sudden says, oh, that's not fair. So the guy got her pregnant and then gets away with no consequences? And I say, well, yeah. Everybody knows it's the woman's fault if she gets pregnant, right? <laughs> Students groan and roll their eyes at my sarcasm. I drive the point home. Why do we judge women so harshly for something like having sex with someone, but men who do the same thing are given a pass or even glorified? Then the bell rings, and the students, grateful not to discuss this awkward question with someone who looks like their mom, <laughs> pack up and <laughs> noisily shuffle out of the room. Now it's lunchtime, so my stepson, 14-year-old Alex, pops into the room. Alex is the product of my husband's first marriage. <laughs> I met this kid when he was one and a half. And I immediately had loved this little person, but had been sensitive to the fact that Alex's mom didn't want him to have another primary maternal figure. Over time, though, it sorted itself out, and Alex called both of us mom. And, and that point is actually very important to this story. So, Alex grinned in a suspiciously mischievous way. What's up, I asked. Oh, nothing, Alex answered, still grinning. I mean, I'm not supposed to say anything. <laughs> I'm not supposed to say anything. Well, I knew that meant that there was a secret or a story that Alex wanted to share but had been told not to. This kid could not keep a secret. I figured it had to do with a surprise being planned for my birthday or maybe even some kind of an award at school, you know, something fun. So I pressed a little bit. Oh, come on. You know you want to tell me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alex said as if I'd extracted some highly top secret information. <sighs> My mom is modeling. She's flying to Florida tomorrow for training. Modeling. Alex's mom was a model. Now, she was a couple of years younger than me, so about 31 at that time, and she wasn't exactly bad looking. Her eyes bulged a little bit like a pressurized goldfish. And her constantly bleached hair mostly frizzed into imitation straw. She was no J-Lo or ScarJo. Uh, okay, what kind of modeling is she doing, I asked, in Florida? <laughs> I see you thought the same, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm not supposed to tell you. <laughs> Alex says, teasing, sing song. Now this is when the little prickly, ill at ease feelings moms get started to nag a little bit behind my eyes. Like, nothing good happens in Florida. That's <laughs> true. This little dance, you know, went on for most of lunch period with no answers. And when the bell rang, Alex just gave me a little wave and swiftly exited, grinning like a lottery winner. Secret kept. So I had to just stew on that for the rest of the afternoon while I taught three more English classes about the Scarlet Letter. The most challenging thing was to convince them that Hester's stoic acceptance of the religious judgment was not numbness, but defiance. She would not accept the guilt they wanted her to feel. Much like Alex, Hester would not give up her secret. But finally, the day ended, and Alex bounced back in for the ride home. 
In the car, my gawky freshman fiddled with the door handle, picked at the upholstery, tapped on the window. Some piece of info was clearly trapped inside this tall body and wanted out. And it was my job to extract it. Okay. I know you want to tell me, I said. Alex stared out the window. Silence. Finally, it's really fine. It's something she's always wanted to do. I promise she won't freak out. When a teenager says that to you, it takes all of your personal control to not freak out. But I knew that I would never get the details if I did freak out. So I maintained my Hester Prynne-like calm. Okay, whatever it is, you can tell me. Alex leaned against the window. The bouncy, excited energy was gone, replaced by something else. Confusion, fear, shit. His mom had recently had a boob job that gave her double G breasts that jutted out from her crop top like the white cliffs of Dover. <laughs> Maybe the upper deck restoration had something to do with all of this. Was she modeling goddess bras, back supports, flotation devices? <laughs> Alex said, my mom is doing porn. I'm not supposed to tell you. So many feelings. Was this a joke? Maybe, maybe Alex got it wrong? Okay, I said, what does that mean? Seriously, you don't know what porn is? <laughs> well, uh, of course I know what it is, but what do you mean when you say your mom is doing porn? Now Alex was clearly upset. I told her I didn't want to keep it a secret, but, but she sat Janet and me down and talked all about it to us, so it's perfectly fine. Jana was the stepsister Alex acquired when porn mom got married to Chuck, a used car salesman slash rodeo clown who sold her a mauve colored Aspire. Then the purchase of the car had happened in the two weeks that my husband and I had gotten married and been on our honeymoon in Vancouver. Before we'd left, they'd never met. So it was kind of an impulsive decision. For context, when Alex's mom had been married to my husband, she loved jazz, she had a diverse roster of friends, she was politically liberal. And after she met Chuck, she became this all-American, super conservative, country music-loving insurance agent. She sponsored t-ball teams. She placed ads on those paper placemats in homestyle restaurants. She sponsored all kinds of community events. When my son came out as gay in the eighth grade, Chuck had offered to buy him a prostitute. Because, you know, how could you know you're gay if you never had sex with a woman? My point is, I did not trust her judgment. <laughs> My job in that moment was to remain calm and to acquire information. Ah, okay, so, um, so what did she tell you? Well, it's perfectly safe because they're tested every week. It's something she's doing for herself. My inner bitch is having a field day. <laughs> safe? According to whom? The Ron Jeremy Safe Sex Handbook? The Perina Raw Dog Field Guide to STDs? And who does porn for themselves? Alex saw the confusion on my face and attempted to address it. Chuck is perfectly okay with it. I was somehow not at all surprised that Chuck was okay with it. But who cares? This was about my kid. So I said, how are you feeling about it? Alex did not look really thrilled. Well, I guess it's okay if that's what she wants to do. I want her to be happy. At this point, I should mention that I feel like people should live their own lives. And if someone wants to make porn movies, either for fun or profit, it's none of my business. 
I was no Puritan labeling sexually active women with scarlet A's on their chests, no matter how big their chest might be. <laughs> but, you know, this felt different. This felt like it could be putting my kid in danger. I did not trust his mom's judgment, and I trusted her husband even less. Was it a priority for them to keep Alex and Jana, two young teenagers, from getting involved in the world of adult entertainment? Would they be exposed to sexual behavior that would shape their ideas of what intimacy was? Or was I just clutching my pearls? I didn't know. I had to really think about what to do next. We didn't talk any more about it that day, but I, I called one of my best friends and told her, and she flipped out. What are you gonna do? She yelled over the phone. I said, well, what can I do? I mean, it's not illegal, it's her business. But is she bringing it home? I mean, is she doing it from inside the house? <laughs> Shit, I hadn't even thought of that. I, I mean, I figured she's going to Florida, leaving all of that there. Maybe that wasn't true. I had extracted from Alex the pseudonym his mom performed under, Mishka 36G. I told my friend, who's a first class internet snoop, and she vowed to do some deep diving to find out how far down this rabbit hole the Mishka thing went. Well, later that night, I got a call from my friend. Jesus H. Christ, she said. <laughs> you gotta look at this stuff. Well, I'm thinking there will be no amount of bleach that will cleanse my eyes if I go looking into the deep, dark porn web for the PTA mom who did Pensacola. I mean, you know, it's different if somebody you know, right? Someone who's co-parenting your kid? Was I just being old-fashioned and Midwestern? But of course, you know, I had to look. <laughs> My friend had found her working website, tastefully festooned with staged photos of her with her husband, Chuck, in all his assless chap glory. <laughs> and I also saw why she chose the name she did. Mishka 36G was definitely 36G. With my friend still on the other line, I poked around the website. She had starring fit roles in such films as Squirting Grannies 2. Granny? Like, I was only like three years older than her. <laughs> oh. Then my friend told me to check out the menu, yeah. which detailed all the sex things she do and how much they cost. Now, I consider myself a fairly well-rounded woman, but there was stuff on that list I did not know what it was. <laughs> I tried to quell the panic in my gut. Maybe I was overreacting and being a prude, so what if she wanted to have sex with people she didn't know for money? Was that a crime? Yeah. Well, yeah, kind of. Um. <laughs> but, you know, criminalizing sexual activity was puritanical and backwards. Accepting that my son's other mother did porn was modeling sexual freedom for the kids, right? It was showing them that it's okay for a woman to be a sexual being in her own right, unfettered by society. And still, it bothered me. A week later, Alex seemed upset. At break, I sat down with him and I asked why. And he said, well, mom is bringing people to the house, making movies and stuff. You, you mean, people are coming to your house and, and making movies in your house? Alex nodded. And inside, my stomach was churning. Alex said, we have to stay in our rooms or they do it when I'm at your house, but it's just creepy. <laughs> my philosophy of empowering female sexuality had glided head on with my maternal instincts. What was the right thing? Let Alex vent about it and leave it alone? Or as a responsible parent, did I need to do something to protect my kids? Nobody covered this in the mommy and me class. I dithered over this for a week or so, and one day, the issue was decided for me. Random students from other classes started to approach me and say, hey, I heard this weird rumor about you. <laughs> and I realized that Alex 
had been telling all the other students about his mom, the one in the porn movies, except at school, everybody knew me as his mom. Now, this made the situation a little bit more urgent. I immediately went to my principal and I explained that, hey, if you heard this rumor, you could rest assured I was not the porn mom. And after spilling my guts to him, he also notified our on-site sheriff because apparently listing sexual things that you will do for money is considered not so legal. So, Mishka and Chuck got a visit from the local authorities telling them to take the menu off the website. And Alex didn't talk to me for a couple of weeks after that, figuring that I was the whistleblower. We, you know, just didn't talk about it after that. Alex pretended it wasn't happening, and we pretended it wasn't happening. Alex's mom even made it into the boobapedia. <laughs> yes, that's a thing. And she had some fans. But her adult movie star phase passed quickly enough due to some less than stellar reviews. So she retired from her celluloid dream job. She divorced Chuck and his rodeo clown ass chaps. And she started a feral cat rescue called Pussy Galore. The reviews for that are great. That was Laura Preble, everybody.